All right, welcome everyone to this lesson on visualizing regression models in R. And my name is Elijah Pia, and you can see that it is clearly visible but that because I know R, I always smile. Uh, personally, I am an economist by profession. And so if you want to reach me, that is my email on the screen. The goal for this lesson is to understand how to use some of our powerful packages for visualizing regression models. And so the lesson so far has seen us through the fact that independent variables can be qualitative dummy variable concepts that we treated last time. They can also be quantitative, which are continuous in nature. And they can also be a mixture of both qualitative and quantitative variables. But the emphasis is going to be stressed on the dependent variable. And we've got to realize that when the dependent variable is continuous in nature, that is interval data, then we most likely would be using a linear regression model. And so if you have one independent variable for a continuous dependent variable, then you have a simple linear regression model. If you have two or more independent variables for a continuous dependent variable, then you have a multiple linear regression model. And the underlying method of estimation is the method of ordinary least squares, OLS for short. Then we also came across the fact that the dependent variable can be discrete or categorical in nature. And we made emphasis on the fact that the dependent variable has only two categories. And so that makes it binary. And for that matter, we looked at about three estimating techniques. And the first one that we considered at that time was the linear probability model, which just means that after we have assigned the value of zero and one to the two categories of the dependent variable, we just simply use the underlying method of ordinary least squares, the same method of estimation that we use when we're dealing with the linear regression model. But we got to realize that there was one very huge problem with the linear probability model, such as if you were generating the predicted probabilities that the dependent variable was going to have the value of one, um, we, we normally would have the predicted probabilities greater than one and also less than zero. Meanwhile, once we have assigned two value labels, zero and one, to the two categories of the dependent variable, we're expecting that our predicted probability should lie between zero and one, the fundamental rule of probability. It must lie between zero and one. Yet using linear probability models, we end up getting predicted probabilities that are greater than one and also negative. And that is where the real problem was uh, in linear probability model. We went ahead to look at how we can get around that problem by considering that we could also use something that we call a constrained linear probability model such that when the predicted probability is actually greater than one, we assume it to be equal to one. And also when the predicted probability is negative, we assume that those values to be equal to zero. So we, we squeeze the values to uphold or fulfill the probability rule that it should lie between zero and one. But that means we are losing some sort of information. So we had to devise other estimating techniques that will guarantee that the predicted probabilities generated for the binary dependent variable would actually have values between zero and one. And so those estimating techniques that we devised at that time were the logit model and the probit models. And these two models actually use the method of maximum likelihood estimation uh, for that. So this is just, let's say, a summary of what we did under modeling. But the emphasis today is we are going to visualize the regression models that we've considered so far, starting from the simple linear regression model to multiple linear regression model to the logic and the probit models that we consider for the binary response variables. And so we are going to consider these three packages for the visualization. The first one is performance, which we've come across already under linear regression model, which gives us a test of the various assumptions in plots. So we'd know whether our variance is homogeneous or not, uh, whether the residuals that we generate after prediction actually is normal, normally distributed or not. So these are um, the, the kind of visualizations that we can produce from the performance package. But 
two important package for visualizing the estimates, the regression coefficients, the p-values and all of that would be the SJ plot package and the effects package. These are, so these so far I've considered as a three um, of the powerful packages for visualizing regression models. And we're going to make use of three data sets. The first one is the MTCAS data set, which is actually built in. So we do not need any library or package for, for this. It is already built in, so we can have access to that with immediate effect. But the two data sets that we are going to work with coming from different packages are the wage one data set and wage data set. And so these two data sets are coming from the Woodridge and ISLR packages, respectively. Now, let's go right into R and have a feel of how to visualize regression models at this point. So we have our very nice header, visualizing regression models in R. And we have some sections. We have the first one being the packages. So these are the packages that we're going to use for the visualization. And so you just go ahead and install these packages and then load them currently in memory to access the functions therein. So if you already have these packages installed, then just ignore the install the packages function and go ahead and run the library function on the package and load it in memory. So you will install and load the performance package, the effects package, and the SJ plot package. Notice that the P is capitalized. Also, we need to go ahead and install the packages for the data sets that we're going to use. And so in which case, we will have to install the Woodridge package and load it. We have to install the ISLR package and also load it. And once that is done, we can go ahead and call in the data sets that we're going to use for our modeling and henceforth the visualization. And so we call in the built-in data set, which is empty cast. So I just highlight this line of code and click on run. And the data set is just right there. If I also go ahead and use the data function on the wage one data set that is coming from the Woodridge packet, the very packet that you have installed up here, you can also run this. And we should expect to have that package, sorry, the data set, but okay, because we did not load the packages. So, Let's do that after one after the other. So library of performance, the library of effects, the library SJ plot, and then we will load the Woodridge package, the ISLR package, and then we can go ahead and load the wage one data set coming from the Woodridge package that we just loaded. So click on run, and we have the wage one data set there. Also, run data function on the wage data set coming from the ISLR package, run that as well, and you have your wage data set also. Now, typically, when I have loaded my data sets, I do have this unevaluated promise right here, but I need to get some overview of what these data sets actually do. And so, I will just come into the console and pretend like I'm just typing the name of the data sets as if I wanted to print it in the console. So if I just type MT, the first three characters, it will just pick it up and it will just pop up right here in the environment window. So MTC, and you have the data set right there. And you can click that to see the sort of columns and what the data is all about in a tabular form. Okay, so let's do that with the wage also. So if I type W, A, G, the two of them will also get loaded up since they all start um, with the first three characters as W, A, G. So you also have them here. You can click on wage and you also have this data set right here with 3000 observations and 11 variables. The empty cast data set also has 32 observations, 11 variables, and the wage one data set has 526 observations and 24 variables. Now at this point, we'll just go ahead and start visualizing our regression model, starting with the linear regression models. And so let's create a simple linear regression model. And in which case, that means our dependent variable must be a continuous variable, and we should only have one independent variable. So I would like us to go into the wage one data set and 
we are going to use the wage variable here as our dependent variable and this education variable here as our single independent variable. And this really represents the years of education. So once we just do that, we need to build a model and I will go ahead and say model. Let me call it model one because we're going to have a lot of models. And then we use the LM function whenever we are building a linear regression model. And then we pass in the formula. So formula equals wage on education. And then the second argument is the data, which should be set equal to the wage one data set. And there was no need for us to specify the names of the arguments, such as formula or the data, but at least we know what we are dealing with. And so that is just okay. So by highlighting this and run this line of code, our model has been built. And then we can go ahead and check a summary of this model that we have built. And this is the result that we are getting. And we've come across this model before in our previous lessons, but let me just take a few seconds to um, say something about what these results are, are about. So we do have an intercept, which is going to be the value of wage because the dependent variable is wage. This is the level of wage when a person has no years of education. And it's actually negative, not so intuitive. So we just assume that a person really doesn't earn anything um, when that person is not educated. But if you look at the coefficient for the education variable, it is 0 0.54136, which tells you that there exists a positive relationship between education and the wage. And so this means that if education, the years of education increase by one every time, then the predicted wage or salary of the individual is going to increase by this amount that we find here, zero point five four dollar dollars. It's not up to a dollar, so dollar. All right. And then we have three stars here indicating that this particular variable is a significant predictor of wage. And the p value, the r squared is around sixteen percent. I just r squared sixteen percent. They are very close, and so that's very good. And our F statistic and its P value is almost zero. So we say that the entire model is significant. However, emphasis is not on the uh, summary results of, of this model, but emphasis is on the visualization. So from the performance package, what are the functions we're going to use for the visualization? The very first one that we're going to consider is the check model function. So this check model is coming from the performance package. And all you have to do is simply pass into it the, the model object that you have created for the linear regression model. So that is all just you have to do. And you go ahead and run this. And often is the case, if your window is not wide enough, you're going to get a warning message here letting you know that the plot window is too small. So we make it as big as it can to accommodate all the plots in there. And so even this may not be enough, because if I go ahead and run this, let's run it again. And let's see whether the plot window is still too small, right? So still too small. So we go ahead to the menu options up here, click on view, and then zoom out. I will click on it again, zoom out the second time so that it becomes big enough. And I will highlight this same code, check model of the model one, run it again, and I believe our plots will show right here. Right, so we have our plots showing right here. And so it gives you some plots of posterior predictive check, its predictive power, the linearity, um, the homogeneity of variance, influential observations, and normality of residuals, all right? And so we just trying to tell you that in terms of the homogeneity of variance, which from econometric or statistical point of view, refers to as the homo scedasticity. It's, it tries to tell you that the reference line, which is a green line right here, should be flat and horizontal in order to establish homogeneity of variance or homo scedasticity. But here we can see clearly that the line is not flat nor horizontal. So it gives us evidence of hetero scedasticity. So we are not interested in looking at the diagnostics and how we're going to remedy uh, some of these issues we are only looking at how to visualize the regression models and so this one will give information about whether your model 
the variance actually is homogeneous or not, and whether your residuals are going to be normal or not, and all of that. So that is just all we are trying to look at over here. So let me drag the window to the right a little bit and now zoom in so we can see clearly our codes. So let's zoom in again. All right, that is quite good. Let's drag this one down a little bit and pull this one again. Great. So this is the function that can actually look into um, some plots surrounding the model object that you created. Now, from the effects package, we are going to make use of two functions. The first one is going to be the all effects, all effects function. And the second one is going to be the predictor effect. And we will use this predictor effect when we move on to the multiple linear regression model. And so let me just clarify from here. And so by using the all effects function, all you have to do is to pass the model objects as simple as it can be. So you have if all effects model one, but when you run this line of code, it is really not going to give you a, a visualization, but it's going to give you some values right here. Okay, the education effect. But what you should do is pass this all effects into the plot function and then you can go ahead and visualize these effects that we are talking about. And so we have our visualization right here, which is just really going to give you an idea about how wage uh, changes if the years of education also change. And so this tells you clearly that with more years of education, your wage is also likely going to increase. And hence, this positive slope um, curve. And that is what this all effects uh, function will do for you. And here we are considering a simple linear regression model where we have only one independent variable. Now, sometimes you really would want to have some grid lines to guide how you would be able to trace out values to the line of best fit right here and determine the level of weight. If you can do that clearly from um, from this particular plot, that is not really a problem for you, but you can pass in another argument, which is called the grid, and then set it equal to true. So that if you run this line of code, you can see the grid lines and you will be able to trace out that supposedly if a person has 10 years of education, then this is most likely going to be the level of wage around $4. So let's say $4.3. So let me go ahead and copy this code, paste it right here so that when you have the script, you can clearly see what is really happening there. So when you go ahead and run this line of code, you get your plot with no grid lines. But if you pass the grid argument in there to true, then you can get the grid lines. Now let's use the SJ plot package to also visualize the same model that we have created right here. And so the function in the SJ plot package that we're going to use is the plot model. Now we'll make use of two functions. Technically, plot models is also there. And we even have the plot residuals. So these are the three functions that we'll consider to have an idea about how the residuals are plotted on your line of best fit. And the plot models can actually visualize more than one model. And so we'll look at them when we are dealing with some of these multiple linear regression models. So for now, let's handle the plot model function and pass in the model one. And you can just highlight this and run. And then you really have a plot of the estimate. And so because the dependent variable is weight, we have it as the title of the plot and education happens to be your estimate, your variable, your independent variable. So you also have it right here and it's trying to give you the value of the estimate, which is really close to 0 0.6. So it should be around 0 0.5, there about 0 0.5253. But the thing is, if you really had the number or the value of the estimates at the top of this point with its confidence interval, that would really be great. And so 
R gives us another argument to add up, which is simply referred to as show dot values and set it equal to true. So plot model, you pass in your model object and simply add this argument show dot values and set it to true. And if you run this, you will have the same plot, but this time around the value of the estimate. Remember when we produce the summary of model one, the estimates or the regression coefficient for education was simply 0 0.54. And that is just what is dumped in the plot for you. And also the three stars here tells you that that value is actually significant, telling you that education is a significant predictor of weight. And so this clearly tells you that when education increases by one year, then the predicted wage of a person is also going to increase by this value because the value is positive. So these are so far the functions in the respective packages that we are using for the visualization. Now move on to the multiple linear regression model. And we are still going to use the wage one data set, but this time around, we are going to have education, the years of experience and the tenor. That is how many years you've spent working in that particular occupation. So wage should be regressed on education, experience and tenor. And so I will just simply come here and create a second model called model two, use the LM function, wage as my independent variable on education, experience and tenor set the data argument to wage one data set and run that and go ahead and produce a summary of model two. And you would now know the coefficient for experience, education, and that of tenor, as well as the significance levels, right? And every other information that you can really find here. So now it now behoves on us to visualize what this model two would look like. So first and foremost, the check model function is there from the performance package and I just pass into it model two, but recall that we need to have a very big window. So yes, now we would need to zoom out so that we can have a bigger window for our plots. And now I can go ahead and run the check model function on the second model, the multiple linear regression model. And we're also going to have the plots of the various assumptions underlying regression models here, such as the linearity, posterior predictive check, homogeneity of variance, uh, collinearity, and then normality of residual. So these plots will actually give you information about how your assumptions underlying your model, whether they are violated or fulfilled. So that is one way to visualize your multiple regression um, model. And so the next thing to do is again, now we can zoom in. And then from the effects package, we are going to use the all effects function again and pass into it our model two, but recall that we need to plot the model two. And so if I go ahead and run this line of code, then because we have three independent variables in there, we also do get three plots, one for each independent variable. So we have education effect. Clearly you can see that the wage of a person increases with increase in the years of education. Also the wage and the years of experience seem to be positively related. And so with more years of experience, then the more wage you also earn. And when it comes to how many years you have spent working in a particular occupation, the tenor, that also seems to have a positive relationship um, with the weight variable there. So we have these three plots for the effects of all these three independent variables that we have captured in there. Now, this is the time where we simply want to look at the other function called the predictor effect that I just talked about. And what this predictor effect is going to do is that, for instance, with the all effects uh, function, it is going to give you the effects of all three independent variables 
in a great form, form of plot, all right? But if you just simply want to look at a visualization of just one independent variable, maybe say the years of experience, then you just have to use the predictor effect function. And so if we go ahead and seek the documentation on this particular function, then we most likely would know that the first argument is the predictor. And so I will just go ahead and if you look at the explanation to the argument, it says the quoted name of the focal predictor. So all I have to do is the predictor should be experience this variable only. And the second argument should be the model. So MOD. So mod simply equals the model to. And remember, I can just take away the name of the argument. And so making it very short. And then you can pass this into the plot function, run it, and you only have the visualization for one predictor. So if you want to do the same thing for, say, tenor, then you only need to change the experience here to tenor and simply run that line of code. And you also have that for the tenor, right? So you use all effect function. If you have multiple variables, multiple independent variables in there, you use all effects function to create a grid plot of all the independent variables that you have included in your regression model. In which case, if you want to have a visualization for only one of the predictors, all you have to do is to use the predictor effect function, pass in the predictor and the model object and go ahead and plot this and you will have it only for one of the predictors. So that's exactly how we deal with this. So this one is coming from the performance package and this is coming from the effects package. But for the SJ plot package, the function to use is plot model. So all I have to do now is say plot underscore model and I'll pass into it the model object, so model two, and I'll go ahead and run this. Yep, and so far you would now have this plot that is showing you the wage as the dependent variable, education, experience, and tenor as the independent variables right here. And so we have the estimated values shown to you with a red dot and their confidence intervals. And so the longer the confidence intervals, then the more significant that uh, estimate is going to be. And the shorter the confidence interval, then the less significant that is going to be. However, these two are clearly significant just that we do not have this, um, the confidence interval really protruding for the experience variable yet. It is also significant if you check the summary of the second model, you will notice that education is very, very significant with three stars. Ten is also very, very significant, but there is a period here which tells you that experience is significant at 10% level, all right? But just like we mentioned up there, it would be much more expedient if we do have the values of the estimates against each of um, these points or dots on the plot. And so all we have to do is in the plot model function, go ahead and use the argument, show dot values and set it equal to true. So by running that, you now have your values right here. Okay, and so this is how you can also visualize a multiple regression model. Now, if you want to know what other arguments that you can pass into the plot model function, there are actually many more. And so, for instance, you can just go ahead and say, maybe look at the documentation, plot model. And if you should run that line of code, simply plot regression models using the plot model function from the SD plot package, we do have plot model. You just pass into it the model. That's the first argument. And that's what we have been doing so far. And then we just went on ahead and brought in this argument, show.values, which is false by default. 
right? And so when we set it to true, we end up getting the values superimposed in the plots. So what thing can you do? You will have to, at your own time, um, make time to go through all of these arguments, such as you want to set the axis title, the axis labels, the legend titles, if there are legends, all right? We do have a lot of arguments that you can actually show here. If you really want to show the confidence uh, level, which by default is 95, I believe you would make it 90 or 99, all right? But one thing I want to show you is this type argument. And so I would like to drag you to the simple linear regression model where we use the plot model function on the first model. And then if I pass into it model one and set the type argument to PRED, which is this value, PRED, then that means we are visualizing the model in terms of the predicted values, all right? But the default one is the estimate. That is why if you go ahead and run this line of code, you end up getting a plot of the estimate. So you can see clearly that has been labeled on the x-axis. Now, one thing I also want to show you is that this visualization of from this plot model function uses the ggplot behind the scenes to create this awesome plot for you. So if you want to do any other uh, modification, you can use the ggplot syntax that you've learned to do so, all right? So if I should take the time to, for instance, load in the tidyverse, and then I go ahead and set my theme to theme lights like this, you highlight this and you run, it will choose a very nice theme for you. Any other thing that you really want to do, you can actually do it with ggplot as well. But let's maintain the default values for now, all right? Now, at the end, let's go ahead and plot the first model, the simple linear regression model. But this time around, we set a type argument to the predicted value. So type equals pred, and if you should run this, it gives you a plot of the predicted values for each years of education, okay? For each value of the years of education. And so this tells you that the, for every year increase in education, then the wage is predicted to also increase clearly from this line that you're seeing right here. And I believe this is almost the same, or let's say similar, to when we actually use plots of all effects on the model objects, right? There's not much a difference. It's actually the same thing, right? So all effects would give you that in terms of the predictions, okay? The predicted values of which, given the values of education, whereas in the plot model function, it would give you that of the estimated values, the regression coefficients, and if you go ahead and show the values, you can have it this way, or you can simply go ahead and plot and set the type to the predicted values. And you also have the same plot that the all effects function would have given you. So that is something that I really wanted to show you right there. So at this point, now that we know the type argument for the plot model function, we can go ahead and do so for the second model that we created. And then we'll set the type equal to pred. And if you should go ahead and run this, you can see it is working there for education, experience, and tenor. It does that one after the other. So all I have to do is, for instance, let me show you. Let's clear all plots, run it again, and then you see exactly what happened. So the first plot is going to be education. The second one is going to be experience. And the third one is going to be tenor. And so it shows you tenor because that is the last one to be executed. And so all you have to do is to use the left arrow key at the top of the plot window to go back to experience, to go back to education. And you can see clearly from the line that the wage is predicted to increase with each year increase in education. And the wage is also predicted to increase with each year increase in the years of experience. And the wage is also predicted to increase with each year that you spend working in a particular occupation.
So that is it with the multiple linear regression model. So far, we have built two models. One, a simple linear regression model where wage is the dependent variable and education is the independent variable. And a second model where wage happens to be the dependent variable. And we have three independent variables, years of education, experience, and tenor. And so from the SJ plot package, we have another function that is known as the plot models. Plot models, which is able to plot more than one model at a time. So all I have to do now is to pass into it the first model that I created and the second model. But before I go ahead and execute this, I want to look at the documentation on the plot models function. And so the plot models function is a forest plot of multiple regression models. And the first argument is the three ellipses that you are seeing right here, the three dots. Now, these three dots simply refer to one or more regression models, including GLM. So let me pull this one to the left, including generalized linear models or mixed models. They may also be a list with fitted models and you can see clearly the examples. That means you have to go down there and you'll see how they use the plot models, all right? So you can just go through and see. This is the first model, a second model, a third model, and they have been given model objects and all have been passed into this. And there is one more argument that they passed in the grid equals true. So let's demonstrate it for what we are doing now to see what should happen. So if I go ahead and use the plot models function and pass into it my simple regression model and the multiple linear regression model, then we end up getting a single plot where clearly we have a legend for wage.1. That tells you that the dependent variable is wage. And so for the blue dot that you can find on the plot, we are referring to the fact that it has only one independent variable, which is education. And so it is simply the wage on education and for the red dots, that simply means we have wage regressed on education, experience, and tenor. All right. So it gives you this legend showing you the differences in the two models there. And so what is it about? Let me copy this, paste it down here, and let's pass the grid equals true argument. And let's see what that would do. So when you pass that in there, it is going to split your plot into two. And so still gives you the legend, but you can clearly distinguish between the independent variables that were used. So in the first plot, it tells you that the weight variable was regressed on education, experience, and tenor with accompanying estimates. And then for the second plot tells you that wage was regressed only on education with the estimate right here. So you can still go ahead and just as you've actually split the plot into two, you can also use the show dot values and set it to true so that the estimate will be shown on the plot. So you can now have something like this. So you have your plot right here. So this really tells you that when wage was regressed on education, there was a positive relationship between wage and education. And that for every year increase in education, wage is predicted to increase by 54 cents. But when we had experience and tenor added up, then the effect of education on wage increased about 60 cents. So you can do this kind of comparison between the two models right there on the plot. So that is a functionality with the plot model and that of the plot models. Now, let's go ahead and visualize a generalized linear model. So let's go ahead and say we have generalized linear 
models. So we are going to start with the first one being the logit model. And then we will deal with the second one, which happens to be the probit model. And we use these models when the dependent variable is binary, has two categories. Now, one thing I want to show you is that from the SJ plot package, From the SJ plot package, there is this plot residuals function where you just simply pass into it the model object. So for instance, you can just simply say model one. And if you should go ahead and run this, it gives you a residual plot of from this particular model. So the plot is, is being created, right? So this is a residual plot. And so it tells you that when you have education on the X axis and wage on the Y axis, this is how the scatter plot will look like. And after creating a linear regression model and imposing into it the line of best fit, which is this straight line passing through the middle of this point, which minimizes the sum of squared residuals. You can see that there are some polar circles on these lines. And that is simply the predicted levels of wage given the years of education. So for instance, we would say that a person with five years of education is predicted to have a wage of about, let's say, $2.5. But in the original data set, the wage value for a person with five years of education is actually above $2.6. Okay, so let's say two point, this is 2.5, so it's around $2.6. But the line of best fit, the regression equation predicted that it is around $2.3. So the difference between the predicted wage and the actual value is the lines that are connecting the two points on the line of best fit, known as the residuals, how much they deviate from each other. And so that is what this plot residual function is doing. Let's use it for um, maybe for a small number of observations. If you recall, the empty cast data set has 32 observations. So let's look at miles per gallon and the weight of the car. So first thing first, I have loaded the tidyverse already. So I'll go ahead and say GG plot. I'll set data equals empty cast. The aesthetics X is mapped to the weight of the car and y to the miles per gallon. So we are making miles per gallon, the dependent variable, and the weight of the car, the independent variable. So we are using the weight of a car to predict the miles per gallon. And then we go ahead and create a scatter plot. So you run this, and this is the scatter plot that we have here. If you want to, put in it the line of best fit, then you have to add another geometry layer known as geom smooth, and then set the method argument to LM. And that is the line of best fit right there. If you want to tune off the standard errors, you can set the standard error equal to false. That is a confidence interval around the line of best fit. You just go ahead and tune it off and you just have the line. And so on this line of best fit, it's going to show you the predicted miles per gallon for the weight of a car. So if the weight of a car is 4,000 pounds, because the weight is in thousands of pounds, 
So 4,000 pounds. Then the miles per gallon is predicted to be around, say, 17 miles per gallon, 17 miles. But the point that is very close to this line of best fit could be this one. And so the difference between the predicted and this point will simply be the residual. And how do we get that? So all we have to do is to create a model object. And so let me just simply call it model A. So model underscore A, and then we run a linear regression model where MPG is the dependent variable, weight of the vehicle is the independent. We set the data to empty cars. And if you should check the summary of this model A, then we get to realize that there seems to be a negative relationship between the weight of a vehicle and the miles per gallon. That is to say that the more heavy, let's say the heavier a vehicle, then the less miles per gallon it covers. And it's very significant as well. So all we have to do is let's go ahead and use the plot residuals function and pass into it this model and run it. And then we clearly have the same scatter plots, weight on the x-axis, miles per gallon on the y-axis. And you can see clearly the actual point lying above and below the line of best fit. And then the predicted points are on the line of best fit. And so the difference between these points on the line of best fit and the points outside of this line will simply be the residual. So that is what this plot residuals function would do. And this is coming from the SG plot. So if you actually take time to check the documentation on this SG plot package, then you would notice that that simply is data visualization for statistics in social science. And it is capable of plotting data visualization for various statistical analysis, even including simple and cross tabulated frequencies histograms, box plots, linear models, mixed effect models, scatter plot, Likert scales, and all of that. So I will leave it to you to explore this package further to look at how you can use it for creating frequency distribution tables, histograms, box plots, and all of that. And I, it's the, uh, this package is very powerful for that sort of data visualization. And if I want to really do just one thing for you to see how powerful this package can be, there is this function called the plot FRQ, which means plot frequencies. And so the first argument is to take in the data. So if I go ahead and check the documentation on this particular function, then the first argument is the data. So I'll just go ahead and say data equals empty cars. And now the three dots here simply refer to it's optional. If you do not pass in any other variable, it's going to try and create frequency distribution for all categorical variables, but those variables must be factor data types. But I, I just simply want to pass into it one of the variables so we get a nice plot for it. And so in the empty cast data set, we do have the number of cylinders right here, four, six, and eight unique values. So I'll just go ahead and say factor of CYL. And if I should run that line of code alone, it says D ply R select. Hmm. Object CYL not found. Okay, maybe is it because I wrapped it into the factor function? What about if I just made it CYL? Would it be able to figure out exactly what I need to have? Yes, it, it did. So it means I do not need to convert this one to categorical. You could have converted it earlier on, but if you um, place it into a function, the factor function, you saw exactly what happened. It didn't work out. So you just pass in the variable and I believe it just knows that you want to plot the frequency of the unique values in this particular variable. So that's a very good thing. And so you have a very nice bar chart here giving you the proportion of bars, the values, and their percentages. And that is really nice a visualization. So you can explore all other functions that happens to be in this particular package, and it will be worth your time.
All right, so let's box on to the generalized linear models. So at this point, I think the very first thing that we need to do is, okay, let me just come down here and have the third one, which was simply the linear probability model. And so first thing first, we are going to use the empty cast data set. And if I should drag my horizontal scroll back to the right, I can see the AM variable, which simply stands for transmission. And the transmission variable has two values, one and zero, where zero represents automatic and one is manual transmission. So at this point, all I have to do is create another model and let's call this one model, should it be three? Yeah, because we do have two models already. So all I have to do is model three and I would use the GLM function and I pass into it the formula. So I'm going to use the AM, the transmission variable and let's regress it on the miles per gallon, just that alone. And then set the family argument to binomial where in there we specify the link to be a logit model. Now let me break this one down. So comma, and then we have our data. We set it to the empty cast data set from which these two variables are coming from. So if we go ahead and run this model, that is a linear probability model. And if we should summarize, so this is trying to tell you that for a vehicle that is automatic or manual, one for manual, zero for automatic, it means that if the miles per gallon that a vehicle covers increases by one unit, then the likelihood that a vehicle will be a manually transmitted vehicle also increases and it increases by the log odds of 1.36. And I believe in our previous lectures, I explained to you how to interpret some of these uh, coefficients. And so I'm going to copy the same code. So let me bring this up here, like so. And for the probit model, I just simply go ahead and change this logit to probit. And name this one as model four. And run it all like that. And then I can plot all effects of model four. And I also see that, yes, the likelihood that for each increase in miles per gallon by a vehicle, the likelihood that the vehicle will be manually transmitted also increases. And then I can use the plot model function and simply pass into it the model four and then show dot values to show us the odds ratios. And so it's the likelihood for every one unit increase in miles per gallon covered by a vehicle, then the likelihood that the vehicle will be a manually transmitted one also increases because it's positive and it increases by the log odds of 1.20. So now we know how to visualize probit models, logit models, and now the linear probability model. So that is what we needed to do. So all I have to do now is to create model five and I would have to use the LM function, all right? So the LM function using OLS, I will use the AM variable on the miles per gallon, set the data argument to empty CAS. And then I can check the summary of model five. All right. And so that's the probability right there. But this is a linear probability model now. So we can say that when the miles per gallon covered by vehicle increases by one mile, then the probability that the vehicle will be manually transmitted is also increasing by around 5% probability. Then we can go ahead and check the plot of all effects of this model five right? So it increases and then we can show the grid to be equal to true. 
And you can see clearly that the line of best fit goes beyond the probability of one and zero threshold, right? So we have some of the predicted probabilities lying below, below it and lying above the one. Then I can use the plot model function and I pass into it model five, run that, and I get the estimated value there. And this is an estimate in terms of the probability because we are dealing with a linear probability model. And then I can simply go ahead and show the values and set it equal to true. All right, so that is a probability, 5%. But for the probit and logit, when we plot the model, we actually get it in terms of the odds ratios. For the probit, it says risk ratios, and that is just simply the same as odds ratios, all right? Not much of a difference there. So for the logit model, we have the odds ratio right here. But when you check the summary of the model, you get it in terms of <clears throat> sorry, of log odds. But the plot is able to figure out exactly and makes it an odds ratio. Because once you have the odds ratio, you can go ahead and determine the probability. And remember that the probability simply is odds divided by one plus the odds. And so, if the odds is reported as 1.36, then the probability that the vehicle will be manually transmitted is simply 58%. So if you're not getting this, you have to refer back to the previous videos to understand how this logic and probate all play out. Now we visualize all the models that we have considered so far, the linear probability model, the logit and probit models, the simple linear regression model, and the multiple linear regression model. But I want to show you how powerful these visualization functions or from these packages can be when you do have categorical variables. And that is when this wage data set comes in. So for instance, we have education here. And if I should scroll to the right, we do have wage. So wage on education. So let's go ahead and predict the wage of a person given the level of education. And so we have high school, less than high school graduates, a college graduate, some college degree, college graduate here, high school graduate and all of that. So first of all, I would like to go ahead and use the GG plot. Okay, let's use the the SG plot function, all right, where we use the plot FRQ. We set the data to wage, and then we just give it the education variable. Go ahead and run this, and then we can have a very nice plot of the education levels of the people under consideration. So we have less than high school graduate, 268 individuals, high school graduate, 971, representing 32.4% of the respondents, and all of that. So all we have to do right now is let's go ahead and create a model. Let's call it model six. So a linear regression model where the wage variable is regressed on education, data equals wage. And if we should go ahead and summarize this sixth model, then you can clearly see, let me drag this one to the right and clear the console, run it again so everything is shown in its window, good. So these are the coefficients. So you're just trying to say that a person with actually no years of education, and I believe that happens to be, let's see, what is the reference category? It's going to be less than high school graduate because we have high school graduate, SCAM college, college graduates, advanced degree. So the high school graduate here happens to be the reference category. And so we're just going to say that when all these education levels are simply zero, let's say a person doesn't have any of these um, education levels, then the wage for a person with less than high school graduates or a person who has yeah any education level lower than high school uh, graduates, below high school, simply is going to earn around $84.
but a person with a high, uh, who happens to be a high school graduate will earn $11.679 more, right? So it means that you can see it happens to increase at every 10. So the higher education, the more wage that you actually get. Now, at this point, maybe the values are just not so pleasing and we could make use of the plot and the plot is going to be very great. So we are going to use the plot model function from the SJ plot uh, package. And we go ahead and pass into it model six and run that. And then we end up getting a very nice plot of the estimated values. And so we would say that a person with high school graduate actually receives wage around this value, okay, around $18. And a person with, let's say, some college degree will also earn above $20. A person with college degree will earn around $40, like so. So you can see that the wage increases as you advance further in education. Now, it will do us some good to have the values there. So show dot values and set it equal to true. And when you have the values there, that makes some sense. Okay, so $11.68 uh, like that. But what about if we use the effects package and we go ahead and make it all effects and we pass into it model six and run this. Then this becomes much clearer. So you can see that we have for advancing higher in education, even the lower than high school graduates is also shown right here. And that would be the least amount of wage that the person can actually get. And so it means that the more educated you are, then the higher the wage you can also get. And mind you that if you want to use the plot model to get this type of plot, as you had from the effects package, then all you have to do now is say plot model, you pass into it model six, and remember the type argument set it to the predicted values. And if you go ahead and run that, then you can actually get the predicted values there. So you can see that the predicted values of wage is set to increase when you become much more educated or you advance higher in the education ladder. So at this point, you would take it kindly and task yourself to actually go through and look at how these visualizations play out. You can check the documentation for guidance on how to use some of these functions and all of that. And one of the most important things I want to show you is that the SJ plot package, just not visualize only regression models, but can give you much more than that bar graphs, histogram, box plots, very nice ones with great details. So I would want you to look at it. And so this is where we bring our lesson to an end on visualizing regression models for what we have covered so far, as far as the ours mentor group is concerned. And so at this point, I will say thank you very much for joining this meeting. And I'll see you next time.